So if if you find I give this advice to to many young people uh, who are asking me about an environmental you know a career in the environment. Um, if you find that when you walk outside, the first thing you do is you look up in the sky and you're happy if it's a clear blue sky or you're sad if you see a lot of smog. Um, if, if that's you, uh, then the career in the environmental field is probably a good place for you to land. So if, if you want to work in the environmental protection field, um, there's this, uh, several different kind of profiles of people that, that work in the environmental protection field. Uh, if, if your you know, interest, your motivation is, is to save the planet at all costs, that you're, you're very concerned about air pollution or you know, deforestation or polluted rivers or whatever it is, um, there are uh, organizations like non-governmental organizations or NGOs that would be a good place uh, for you to, uh, to think about working. Um, if you're you know, interested in not necessarily saving the planet at all costs, but, but interested in, in making the planet a better place to live, um, uh, governments are a good place to work. Most uh, you know, major governments in the world have environmental departments or ministries. Um, and, and those places, uh, those types of organizations employ people to not only write environmental regulations, but also to enforce environmental regulations. So a, an environmental department, an environmental minister may have a team of inspectors, for instance, that goes out to the various factories and industries in their country and their jurisdiction and says, okay, I'm here to do an inspection. Show me your bag house and show me that it's working. Or I'm here to do an inspection. Let's see where you take your uh, water samples for your discharge into the stream that's nearby. Um, those kinds of enforcement actions and enforcement activities are important to make sure that, that you know, industries follow the environmental regulations. There's another place that uh, people can work and that's on the, the private side. Uh, there are consultants like me that are hired by industries or factories to help them comply with the environmental regulations. So a, a factory, for instance, hires a consultant like me when they want to build a, a, they want to increase capacity. Maybe it's a cement plant that wants to make more cement. So they need to put on a new cement kiln. So they have to demonstrate to the government before they can get their permit to build that cement kiln that the increased emissions to the atmosphere that are going to come, come about because of that new cement kiln that those increased emissions won't result in adverse environmental impacts, won't result in air pollution concentrations above the, the standards. So they hire someone like me to do that kind of an analysis. Um, sometimes factories will hire consultants to take weekly you know, samples of uh, uh, you know, pollutants in their discharges to local streams. And, and those types of uh, you know, in, environmental consultants We'll head out on a weekly basis and, and measure from rivers and, and file reports with the government. So there, there's many different kinds of perspectives that you ca can have and work in the environmental field. But I do want to emphasize that it's important, I think, to have both of those perspectives. If, if you only had the perspective of the person who wants to save the planet at all costs, then to operate a factory or operate an industry would be very, very expensive because they would constantly be having to reduce their pollution and, and put on more and more control devices. And as a result, you know, that cement that that cement plant makes uh, gets very expensive. And that cost ultimately gets passed on to the consumer who buys the cement to build his house or pave a road or, or whatever. On the other hand, you can't only have the environmental uh, people that work for industry because then, well, the, the needs of industry will win and they won't necessarily pay as much attention to the state of the environment as they have to. So it's, it's very important to have both of those perspectives in there, the perspective of the person who wants to save the environment at all costs and the, person, the perspective of the person who wants to maintain the environment in the context of economic development. And by those two perspectives working together, uh, that's how I think we, we best protect the environment and also have a, a sound and sustainable economy. So looking over the next uh, couple of years, you know, jobs that will be in demand in the environmental field, it, it depends where you are in, in the environmentally developed countries. 
um, those jobs are going to focus more on uh, com compliance and you know the, the environmental regulations are already established. Uh, I'll use the United States as an example. The environmental regulations are established. Factories are used to complying with those environmental regulations. Because the environmental regulations in the United States are so restrictive, because they've been around for so long, it's difficult for factories to, it's, different, it's difficult for countries, companies to build new factories. So there is not necessarily a lot of new construction going on. There certainly is some. Um, so most of the environmental jobs in the uh, environmentally developed countries or on the compliance side. Those factories will always need people to make sure that they are complying with their permits. Those permits have um, uh, you know, clauses in them that require the, those factories to take measurements regularly and submit these in the United States to EPA, for instance. Um, all, of those, uh, all of those kinds of jobs certainly are touched by the digital age. Um, you know, all of those readings are you know, typically done with, you know, fairly high, high technical devices um, that, you know, communicate up to the cloud and you get all of your data organized and you, you send it, you know, remotely to the, uh, to the appropriate regulatory agency. So in the environmentally developed world, that's, that's kind of a good place uh, to, to look for jobs. Um, there will always be jobs in government. Government is always you know, looking for new things to regulate and new ways to, to improve the state of the environment. But there are also, you know, jobs in countries that aren't as well developed from an environmental standpoint. So while there are many different, you know, roles and jobs and tasks that you can do in the environmental field, um, at its core, uh, a career in the environmental sciences, the environmental protection field, whatever you want to call it, is a scientific uh, career. So courses in the sciences, courses in mathematics, um, th those are very important to take. Um, it's very, very helpful to get a degree from a, a university or a college, like any career that opens up many, many doors to you, that if you don't have that degree, it's, it's harder to, to get into certain fields. One piece of advice that I give, give young people is, is definitely take as much mathematics as you can. Uh, math is kind of at the core of, of most of what you do in the environmental sciences, particularly statistics. Um, if, if you have a sound understanding of statistics, that is very, very helpful to sort of understanding the language uh, of the environmental sciences field that you'll see no matter whether you do air pollution or water pollution or solid waste or whatever. Having that good, firm understanding of statistics is uh, very, very helpful. So as, as time has come on and we've moved into the digital age, uh, access to information has increased tremendously. Um, and that could be both a good and a bad thing. It can be a good thing in the sense that, you know, anybody uh, with a little bit of effort or a little bit of know-how can have access to all kinds of environmental information. They can look up, you know, what are the air pollution levels in their, in their area? They can look up, you know, is the you know, stream that they like to fish in safe for eating the fish that come out of the stream? Uh, all of that information is available. The negative side of it is all of that information is available. And if you don't really know how to interpret it properly, you can easily make bad conclusions and, and get all worried about things that really aren't necessarily things to be worried about. So it, it's a challenge in this digital age uh, from an environmental standpoint too. Uh, make sure you're interpreting those data correctly and, and using them correctly. Um, if you're not, you can end up kind of going down the wrong path and putting a lot of effort and a lot of excitement about an issue that, that may not really be, may be that important. So my name is Bill Jones. I'm president of Blue Sky Modeling. Uh, I have been doing air pollution work in the environmental field for about 30 years.